All right, how's everybody doing? So first off, uh, a personal story. I'm an ex-Hoboken native. Um, spent 10 years here. I used to come out here as a youth on these very piers and dream about life in the big city. And here I am working for a tech startup talking about AI. I think uh, it's, a, it's a story. So Gen AI for small business. So first off, anyone talking about generative AI has to establish credibility. I'm not an expert. I'm here to tell you about um, my purview as a company who centers their entire focus around small business. So we are JustWorks. Our product, HR, benefits, payroll, compliance. Um, we sit at the center as the anchor system of record for our, our customers. And so we observe their workflows. We observe their day to day. Um, I run the product team. And my focus, my obsession, is on their jobs to be done, understanding everything a small business needs to do in their day to day. I've personally been working for uh, small businesses in SaaS models like these for quite some time. And although they come in all shapes and sizes, the one thing that is very, very true, regardless of what kind of small business you are, is that you desperately want to stay focused on your core competency. And oh, you have to run an entire business in addition to that. And so in the small business world, they're constantly looking for leverage. They come to JustWorks for leverage, right? They come to many partners for leverage. And so in this themed talk about generative AI, the opportunity here is a little bit of that leverage. Now, this world is moving really, really quickly. Moore's law is in, is in full effect. Transistor capacity doubles. And so we see moments like this, where technology moves way too quickly for folks to catch up to and get ahead of. And it's no different for small businesses. And so while there's a ton of excitement, there's also a ton of risk. And a little personal story, I met with our executive customer board uh, a couple, couple months ago when we first broached the conversation around generative AI. And they said, please, 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 don't be distracted by that, right? Like, we, we come to you for these core services. We come to you for these really basic things. Please don't get distracted by that. And to me, that's a bit of a signal of the fear of distraction for themselves, staying focused, not jumping on the hype cycle and spending a lot of time and distraction there. It's concerns about creating bad patterns, misuse of AI, and then, of course, the classic digital security, thinking about IP and thinking about other ways that it could harm the business. But we're in the tent of inspiration, so we're going we're gonna to do this presentation with abundance. We're going to put that risk aside for just a second and we're going to think about all the upsides and where the leverage could come from. And so my theme is, is actually quite simple. It's that the most leverage for small business comes from the greatest asset, their people. And so this is a reinvestment theory at its core, right? Trying to take tons of rote labor that happened yesterday and replace that with more strategic work. So to be clear, it's really not about automation for me when I think about our company and our, our small businesses. It's about transferring the time spent on the types of things that are low quality to the types of things that are more strategic, more forward thinking, more conversations with your customers. And so the theme here is grabbing leverage from your people. Now, uh, just works. We practice what we preach. And so we started out sort of avoiding that shiny new object and deploying a new feature that was AI driven to our customers. And we kicked this process off at the beginning of the year like a lot of businesses and maybe a lot of you in this room did, with a working group, extracurricular, squeeze it in, discover this new technology and help us understand how it impacts our business without getting the rest of the organization distracted. And we dug into hundreds of use cases across a cross-functional team from engineering to marketing to sales and found kind of these three through lines that really resonated with us. Looking at the employee life cycle, we cherish it. We're a thousand person company, Everyone in, everyone out, we care deeply about. We care about hiring better, onboarding faster, retaining longer. And so really taking a look at our employee life cycles and the opportunities to lift that up. The second is powering the day to day. So the last speaker spoke about this quite well, which is this is a core competency, we think, for the future. When we look at lots of disciplines across our organization, it's hard to not pick one of them and say that's gonna transformationally change and we have a duty to those employees to set them up for their future and also to set them up to be you know, better just workers. And then finally, the voice of the customer. We, we sort of live and die by this, how we get signals from our customers. 
And so we really dug in on how to get better quant, better qual, and open up new opportunities in those areas. So I'm going to share with you how I think a couple of these things apply to slightly smaller businesses than, than us in the small business sector. So first off, the employee life cycle. The whole thing will be uplifted. Um, basic stuff, efficiency, speed, going through this process as a small business, you often have no HR, some HR, busy HR, people wearing multiple hats. So that's the practical stuff. The more existential stuff is how you might think about hiring better, <laughs> uh, onboarding faster, retaining longer. And in that world, what we've seen from, from our work and from the small businesses is that a lot of the action right now is happening around that hiring and onboarding process, not unsurprisingly. It's the most critical thing you can do as a small business. You may only hire two people, five people a year, and you gotta get them all right. And there's pretty amazing stuff happening in the hiring and onboarding space that can really be transformational for small business. So thinking about hiring, it's a practice that's actually pretty hard to build in a small business. A lot of the employee life cycle gets deferred. So employer brand, you don't really think about that when your marketing budget is going to the, you know, the, the, the daily got to bring customers in the door. When you think about performance management, when you think about learning and development, these types of practices, they're often deferred until your company grows to a size where you can validate investing in that. And hiring is one of those areas that's always a little bit underinvested in. And so the ability to norm around a rubric for hiring, the right job description, a hiring committee that can be driven by recording interviews and extracting and calibrating those findings so that you can make a great decision. And then the ability to make a great offer in a crazy transforming space where offers look very different in February than they do in May. And so tent of inspiration, I'm gonna do a couple of these. Imagine sitting at a decision point for a new candidate as a small business and having had your entire hiring rubric loaded in to a system that's extracting from every interview in that hiring loop all of the little signals around the values pieces and the hard skills that you really need to feel sure about before you make that decision. And imagine being the hiring candidate and seeing all that summarized with very, very low lift in a way where you can make a really, really confident decision, right? And it's not an imagine. There are uh, many companies that offer this and many ways to build this internally that could be really powerful. The second, maybe more obvious piece is onboarding. The faster you can onboard, the more effectively you can onboard, the better. Moving months of full ramp to weeks of full ramp is like a pretty amazing thought. So when we think about onboarding, what are the opportunities to auto-create documentation, right, around those special skill areas on the department level? Imagine taking the corpus of your entire organization, right, all of the context, the strategy over time, the memo from five years ago, and then the memo from two years ago, and making that available in a synthesized form that kind of tells the history of your company in a way that someone would really only get after a year of sort of experiencing it in hallway conversations. And then imagine the, 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 the basic concept of being fully, fully onboarded and being able to self-drive that process. So this is not a crazy idea, it's a pretty straightforward one. A lot of onboarding happens through those hallway conversations, asking that crazy question that you feel kind of stupid for asking to that person and you apologize and you ask it anyway. Well, imagine a model that points at the corpus of your data, Slack, Confluence, wherever you keep the history of your company, and an employee self-directing their onboarding by asking conversational AI that ridiculous question and doing it iteratively throughout the day with something that can actually feed back the cumulative knowledge of your company can be pretty powerful. Anytime you can move something as a self-directed action to an employee, you know it's gonna be more efficient, it's gonna be more effective. So really great opportunities in the employee life cycle. Second is empowering the day-to-day. -day. Again, the previous speaker spoke um, quite a bit about this and day-to-day -day work is all about building a competency for this new skill, this concept of prompt engineering. So we had a really great working group and they're continuing to do it cross-sectional across all the disciplines in our team to enable them with access to the models, an understanding of prompt engineering, and what that means and how you grow that skill set. And we're starting to build role-based published prompts across the organization that will really help you depending on if you're in a marketing role or if you're in an operational role, et cetera, et cetera. But imagine the power of, of sort of hooking up a model 
a conversational interface to your internal data, performance data, knowledge, internal knowledge, as I mentioned before, uh, your BI data, your customer data, as well as the wealth of information on the web, and thinking about how that could drive your daily decisions, your daily workflows, what you could personally automate with those types of insights, it completely intermediate, disintermediates the concept of, well, if I need data, I need to know SQL, right? I need to know BI tools, and I need to have someone make a view for me. No longer. The same concept that the last speaker talked about with unstructured data is the advantage here, where you can take a bunch of denormalized data and create opportunities for more employees to self-serve, even if they're not a data expert even if they don't know every answer to every question, even if they've been onboarded for only two to three months. The third area is the voice of customer. And so this area is really around how you can get those many different signals, qualitative, quantitative signals, into a place where you can make decisions off of them. So the real basic stuff is, again, that unstructured data question, which is, can you suck it in from all of these sources, your customer success emails, your NPS scores, all of these different types of sources and bring it into a central location. The real unlock beyond that is the concept of maybe training, not even training a model, but tuning a model ever so slightly to act as your customer. You've got, in any small business, constant communication that's either recorded or emailed, feedback, and you can load that into a model and create the panacea of what we all hope for the voice of the customer, which is not just data that's available to look up, not just stories that are published in a slide, but the ability to have a conversation with, with someone who's going to sound a little bit like your customer so that you can run that idea past them, gut check something, uh, and really explore the voice of a customer in a more active way. You know, We all hope that our customers would come to our office every day and sit next to us so we could ask questions to them. There's, there's a way to emulate a version of that that we've found some success on thus far that could be really powerful for small businesses as well. And so key takeaways, you know, Gen AI is moving at an unprecedented pace. The risks are real, but the leverage is, is pretty strong here. And we think that if we can get past some of those risks in the small business sector, we can do some, some pretty amazing things. So if people are at the heart of this, it's about investing in those people. And this is not an insignificant ask. Um, we've been trialing this for about eight months. And our experiences thus far have been factoring in this concept of understanding prompt engineering, like learning the language, understanding how to put in what you need to get out what you want, is a really, really tricky thing, especially when you have a busy day job, when you gotta make 20 sales calls a day, right? Or you gotta submit your code uh, timely before stand-up. So the hardest part is really making space for this, and we think that in the small business world, this will be even more challenging. But if, we, if you can invest in that, even modestly, you'll start to see the gains, you'll roll them forward, and ultimately, there's an opportunity to uh, really build amazing things and create leverage for a small business world where you really have an opportunity to differentiate. So what separates a small business from a large one? They haven't hired their next 100 employees yet. And so there's a positional power here of small businesses to really envelop this into their DNA so that when they think about how their company grows over the next three years, they can think about a trajectory of growth that will resemble more of a future than a previous state. And so um, being a good conference goer, I'll end this talk and say our booth is over there in the corner. Um, I'd love to chat with any of you, especially folks who are sort of interested in some of the product features and, and sort of applications. We are, of course, working on some of those things. I talked a lot about the people side and, and, and driving JustWorks people to be more powerful. Um, but we're working on some really interesting concepts and like anyone in the AI space, more conversation about whether those things make sense, whether those things resonate, whether those things seem like something you could do with confidence is really important. So things like conversational interface for things previously that you would go through a workflow, a very complicated workflow through. Can you ask a question, get an output and complete that task without moving through 17 forms of information. Uh, the second thing is generative insights, which is really, really exciting to us. So we are in a system of record and we uh, have the privilege of holding the data of our customers. And from that data, there's the things that you look for, but also from that data are the things you don't think to look for. 
And so we've been piloting some interesting things around generative insights, around workforce data, around employee life cycle, and really, really interesting things that could come from that. And for anyone who's a super nerd and likes this kind of stuff, um, we're interested in tackling some of the more complex things that we as a company help our small businesses do, like multi-state compliance. Um, and so we think that some of the riskiest opportunities uh, may also be some of the most interesting ones for us. So if you're interested in talking about any of those things, our booth's over there. My name is Ed. It was a pleasure. Thank you for your time.